the cryptocurrency market is highly volatile and is still highly speculative. That being said, for anything that's highly speculative and highly volatile, it actually means that if there's something that's really, really good, it could cause people to buy and markets push higher. But in the same way, if there's something that is not according to what people are expecting or somewhat bearish in terms of its undertone, it would cause also the markets to push lower. And that's what we're seeing right now. And Hey guys, so by the time I'm making this video, we're seeing continuous downward pressure for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and the rest of the cryptocurrency market. Majority of the altcoins are heavily battered. We're seeing a lot of downward pressure. And truth be told, if you try to analyze it also and look at the charts from the time Bitcoin hit 69,000, it's still continuing its downward progression. As you can see, it's building lower highs and lower lows which depicts a classic downward trending formation downward trending pattern which is also consistent to how the second largest cryptocurrency ethereum is actually forming and even if you add bnb to the mix which is how the larger cryptocurrencies also from ethereum and bnb is actually forming as well and from a candlestick perspective where you're seeing large red candles and breakdowns from specific support levels if you look at the moving averages majority of the cryptocurrencies are below long mid and short term moving averages people are asking what's the primary trigger for this as i was trying to browse through headlines what's evident is that companies that filed for bitcoin etfs were not approved and the SEC gave their explanations on why they were not approved whatever license that they were getting at or pushing forward for it was somehow insufficient you would see a lot of analysts months prior to this saying that the Bitcoin ETF was somewhat a certainty that it would usher in more people coming into the crypto market space that a lot of people who didn't want the hassle of opening their own cryptocurrency account or opening their own wallet now had the ability to have exposure to Bitcoin in a traditional way just buying an ETF and having the ability to be able to uh, track Bitcoin. For those who don't know what an ETF is, an ETF is an exchange traded fund. Think about mutual funds that majority of mutual funds are tracking either stock or bonds that you buy this ETF for example, it's tracking the S&P 500, it would copy and mirror the movement of the 500 stocks that are in the S&P 500, including its weight, including the percentage of it in that particular portfolio. There are different asset classes that ETFs track. You have ETFs that track silver, you have ETFs that track a variety of commodities as well. This would have been the first ETF in the US that would track spot Bitcoin markets. A lot of people are saying that, oh, don't we have like an ETF already for Bitcoin in the US? That ETF is for futures. And as you all know, what matters the most is the spot market because that's the real buying of the actual asset of Bitcoin. I want people to realize this, that above and beyond this particular headline. So when you see headlines like this, looking at it from a news narrative, looking at it from a headline narrative, it's something that's bearish. But I want to say this and I've been saying this over and over in the videos that I have been creating here in this channel. Please do remember that the cryptocurrency market is highly volatile and is still highly speculative. That being said, for anything that's highly speculative and highly volatile, it actually means that if there's something that's really, really good, it could cause people to buy and markets push higher. But in the same way, if there's something that is not according to what people are expecting or somewhat bearish in terms of its undertone, it would cause also the markets to push lower. And that's what we're seeing right now. And the reason why I'm saying this is that if you came into the cryptocurrency market looking for a pump, looking for your asset to go to the moon, looking for your token to just continually push up, then this is a good realization to everyone watching this that it doesn't always go up. Eh? If people told you that if you invest in the cryptocurrency market, you would have large gains, large returns, that's not the reality because at the end of the day, it follows every investment principle. Legitimate investments, the higher the risk, the higher the reward, the lower the risk, the lower the reward. In the same manner that's happening right now, we are seeing downward push as a result of disclosures that we're seeing actually in the news, which is causing downward sell pressure. When majority of the people are scared, they're going to react 
in a way that's somehow defensive. Either they sell, take out their cash, and try to escape the volatility, or when people are scared and there's a lot of uncertainty, they try not to be aggressive. If you notice it, when everyone's excited and the market is relatively higher and more expensive, it doesn't stop people to buy it. They just keep buying because everything is sweet, everything is rosy, everything is going up. But when the flip side is happening, everything's scary. People don't want to buy. Everything's relatively cheaper. But because everything's scary, everyone is in a defensive position. This is not the last time that we would see downward strides in the cryptocurrency market, even in the stock market, even in whatever market you are investing or trading on, even if it's commodities as well. If you are in investments that are volatile, please do expect that when times are bad, when news is not as flattering, downward trajectories are part of the game. It's normal and you would see it push massively lower. That's why people who really become successful in investing always have the discipline also that if I enter something that's highly volatile on the downside, I need to also condition myself to know not to panic when in its cycle, it's not as fruity as what everyone wants it to be. But in the same way also, when all of the selling is done, when all of the bearish sentiment is done, reversals would always happen as well. And in the same way, that's when you're not supposed also to sell too quick that's when also you start to also to ride its upward movement. So why am I saying this? If you notice it, when times are good, you need to be unemotional so you don't sell too quick. When times are good, you have to stay disciplined and patient to continue to follow your plan. But in the same way, when times are bad, you also need to be disciplined. You need to be patient. You don't have to panic sell. Because I'll say this over and over, if you're gonna decide you're buying, you're selling, you're huddling based on emotions, then that's when it becomes a very, very slippery slope. I'll say this over and over that if you're new to the market or even if you're, you've been in it for quite some time but you're feeling a bit of anxiousness, you're quite uneasy because of what's going on right now, what I want to submit to all of you is this. This is not the end. There will be more times like this where volatility will just continually happen. Think about it this way. If the S&P 500, the US stock market, there's heavy volatility also from time to time. It's not as volatile as the crypto market, but the US stock market has been there for quite some time already, but it has its moments of volatility. It has its moments where sell downs are very, very pronounced. If that is the case for an asset class that has been here for hundreds of years already, how much more for something that has just been over a decade old. The newer ones tend to be the more riskier ones, but it's the riskier ones also that tend to give you the most upside to balance everything out. If you can't sleep well at night because of this, if this is giving you pressure, then it's a lesson already that maybe you're the type of person that the investment that fits you is something that's less volatile. Because it's easy to say that you want to take on the risk when times are good, but the biggest measure, in my opinion, for you to be able to determine if that investment is for you or not, is at times when things are bad. Eh? It's when times when there's a lot of uncertainty because that's when your ideologies will get tested. That's when your ability to actually not panic will also get tested. So let this be a time to see, ah, the market's dropping it, but I'm not panicking and I know what to do. Then it actually means you're actually passing the test, that it actually allows you to have the wisdom and the knowledge that when this happens again, I know already what to do. I already have a plan. I already have a strategy. I know how to diversify myself. Or if you're panicking in times like this, maybe because you've allocated also an amount of money that you shouldn't have allocated as much in the crypto space. And you may actually say that, okay, all of my positions are in Bitcoin and Bitcoin is the one that's not as volatile as compared to other cryptos. Bitcoin is the one that a bit more secure than the other newer cryptocurrencies out there. I still can't take the volatility. My suggestion also, check your portfolio allocation. Check the amount that you've actually placed there. If it's something that you might have exposed yourself too much. And if you're exposing yourself too much, it's all about rebalancing. It's all about creating a balancing act also that if I'm ex super exposed to crypto, maybe I need to balance it out with either cash, regardless if it's fiat, 
or even stocks or even bonds or even other asset classes that would create a balance for you there's nothing wrong with that when i would say that crypto is game-changing technology bitcoin is game-changing technology you always still have to temper it with risk management you also have to temper it with an amount that you can live with sleep with and not be nervous about and in the same way diversification also helps that being said no one knows how low a market will go that's why it's very very important to manage your risk it's very very important to know how to position it's very very important also that you're diversified but at the end of the day for those that have so much value for projects that have so much utility, for projects that will be there over a long period of time, for cryptos that, like any other blue chip stock from Apple to Amazon to Microsoft, after drops, after crashes, come reversals as well. A question that you need to ask yourself is, what are you doing while it's dropping, while it hasn't reversed yet? And what will you do later on when a reversal is actually happening? I guess that's it. I hope that this was something that's helpful for all of you. If you want to learn more about these different asset classes, we have a live course coming out this March where I'm going to talk about bonds, where I'm going to talk about REITs, where I'm going to talk about the stock market, where I'm also going to talk about Bitcoin, altcoins, and NFTs as well. So check it out in the description below. We also have technical analysis courses. We also have books available for all of you for those who want to learn more. But if not, we have a lot of videos here in YouTube that you can watch anytime and I hope that it gives value to you and I hope that it helps you. And the reason why I just keep doing this, creating videos and content is that at the end of the day, you are your greatest asset. At the end of the day, it's all about you building yourself up, learning, and continually making yourself better. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's about continuously learning, trying to find yourself to make yourself better, not bitter, and using your knowledge to continue to help you grow to whatever goals that you have towards financial freedom. If you want to invest in the metaverse, also Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, I have links down below that you can actually check out. You can actually buy metaverse land, you can buy land in sandbox, and you can buy your favorite cryptocurrencies as well. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll try to make more videos on the questions that you're making. But I guess that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.